wacky. I didn't set a proper URL, but it works. It's been running for five, six years now, since 2018. Uh, a, a bunch of folks I know use it. Uh, many merchants use it. Over time, I was using, I was being their custodian. It was giving me headaches because, yeah, custodying my own money, I can do that, but you know, <laughs> I'm a little technical, but sometimes an update fails or I don't know, the server is down or and I need to reboot it and it doesn't boot up. It always gave me like cold sweats and <laughs> when it's uh, Im involving other people's money. <coughs> and so I'm very, very happy that I don't have to do this anymore and that I can recommend people to use the Blink plugin. Uh, you can actually also read about <laughs> the Blink plugin. Maybe this is something that I can also quickly show you while uh, the folks in the audience are downloading their Blink app. And so this is the Blink web page. And here in the blog, we have a announcement. Um, so it came out on January 4, January 8, uh, quite new. So this is what it looks like. Um, there is also, uh, so th here it explains basically what the plugin does, the key benefits. You do, it's super easy to set up. You just need a phone number. Um, there's a couple of things like basic instructions. And there's also specifically for this plugin a documentation page here in the API documentation of Blink, which you can find at dev.blink.sv. And here there's really a step-by-step -step, um, um, guide on how to do this, where you can, if you get stuck anywhere, um, like it should be very straightforward. You will see like after this workshop, you won't need to go through this, but should you ever need it or want to help a friend who's not next to you, you can send this over and they should be fine and be able to set it up. Um, all right. Uh, so we're going to go through all these steps. Um, shout out to OpenOMS who documented this beautifully and also um, quick history of how this plugin came to be. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, Blink is open source, built on the ga open source Galois stack. Um, I wrote a bounty um, and because I thought this plugin would be very useful for me so I could sleep better. And um, yeah, the team agreed and we put a little bounty on it and posted it on GitHub and Mr. Cooks, uh, who is a very prolific and great developer, um, uh, also a BTC pay server wizard, um, thought, hey, this looks like something I can do on a weekend. And he went ahead and did it. And uh, so um, yeah, it, it happened basically in a matter of a month or so. So big shout outs also to uh, Mr. Cooks. Jason, you have a question? Yeah, sorry if you covered this, but what is the problem this is solving? I'm not sure where this fits in the... Yeah, what is the problem this is solving? I'm not sure where this fits in the whole m ecosystem of Bitcoin Lightning. Okay, so what problem does this solve? Um, I mentioned it in the beginning. So in order to uh, use BTC Pay Server, like the name it implies, you have to run a BTC Pay Server. You have to run a server. <laughs> and this is a barrier for many people. Mm. So they can't access really the tools that BTC Pay Server offers, many great apps, like a donation button that you can put on your website, like a crowdfunding app to collect money for your social project or just a e-commerce uh, integration with WooCommerce or Shopify. All these things BTC Pay Server can do, but you can only access it if you run a server. Plus, you, have, you need to have a, your own Lightning node. Um, in, and, and that's just a barrier. And, and we're removing the, that barrier. We're making these tools accessible for anybody who has a smartphone and, um, and the phone number. You do need BTC Pay Server, but you can use safely someone else's BTC Pay Server instance that is out there in the wild, and it could be your worst enemy. Um, you don't have to trust them, um, even less so than if you put an XPUB, because if you put your XPUB, they can view your transactions, even though they can steal. With the Blink API read-only key, 
they only can send you money. That's all that literally it can do. No transaction privacy lost or financial privacy lost in that case. You don't have to trust them. And if you, if it's, you, it just needs to be reliable and have a good uptime and the low latency so the payments are quick, right? That's all you need. And we have a bunch of folks running BTC Pay servers out in the wild. There is also a directory on BTC Pay server dot org, um, I think. Uh, we have it in the article. Uh, it's here at the bottom. Um, there is, let's open it up. Yeah, uh, there's a BTC Pay server directory with a couple of instances that are running in the wild. For example, Bitcoin Aruba is a pretty cool one that has open registrations. And actually, we could go ahead and use that one for our demo today. Um, so, yes. Um, well, is it this one? I'm not sure. Yes, uh, um, one second. No, just just for a note, oldie like me, uh, um, can I use this to uh, sell things through a website uh, using uh, sets? Yes. Is that, that a is major that pur about, purpose? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, if you're a little bit familiar with the e-commerce world, yeah. it's a f amazingly fast-growing ecosystem. Year over year, every year it's growing for the last 10 years. It's $6 trillion in revenue or so last year. It's only 15% of global commerce though, and it's, it's shifting more and more to e-commerce. However, what you need in order to have an e-commerce, and, and of that e-commerce, the, the solutions that are out there, the majority, like more than 50% is WooCommerce, it's the market leader, and the other one is Shopify. WooCommerce is open source, so it's also um, um, more affordable, uh, it costs nothing, I think. You can just use WordPress and add WooCommerce to it. Shopify works similarly easy, but it costs a fee. There are others like Prestashop and Joomla, I think. And BTC Pay Server is compatible with all of them. So you, th they all of them have a BTC Pay Server plugin where you can connect your BTC Pay Server store to WooCommerce, to Shopify, to PrestaShop, to Joomla, and many others. And you can connect your Blink account to BTC Pay Server, so you're selling soap or tea or ice cream, pro yeah, whatever, uh, baby shoes, <laughs> uh, English lessons, uh, graphic design services, software coding consultancy. Digital services are even better because you don't have to ship them. But you can easily put those things on your website, into your e-commerce shop, and usually, now that's where I'm excited about, you have to get paid. So how do you get paid? Usually it's credit card or PayPal. There's Klarna and some other payment providers. They all require a bank account. <laughs> so they're inaccessible to the majority of the global population that could may want to use these services too. So now we're making them accessible with just a phone number. They can get paid in Bitcoin and hold Bitcoin or dollars, right? For very, from anywhere in the world, hardly any fees. If it's blink to blink, it's zero fees. If it's lightning, you're just paying the routing fees. If it's stable sets that you want to hold, it's 0.2% spread, which is super fair. Experts call it 20 basis points. <laughs> okay. so. Um, let me see if this is now the one. Yeah, so this is um, Bitcoin Aruba. They run a BTC Pay server. Uh, I think it's Peter Kroll. Shout out to Peter Kroll. And um, yeah, who wants to go first? Let's create a Okin. All right. Um, so let's go to create your account. Let's do it. Let's go to create your account. Let's you can it. actually sit here oh, okay. and do it yourself. You can enter. Ah, no. So do you have access to your email address? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can go ahead. Probably you're going to get a, you have to con verify your email address. On my instance, I turned that verification on, uh, off, so you can just add anything. Uh, but if you lose it, then, yeah. What's possible to do? Like, any bank? 
uh, yeah, just something that you can remember and probably you can change it later. You have to confirm it to. I'm gonna remember it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's that fast. Okay, so you have to click that link. Okay. And now you should be able to, we should be able to go to the login here and use the details that you just uh, verified and log into your BTC Pay server instance of Bitcoin Aruba. And. If okay, <laughs> awesome. So. Um, all right, so now we're gonna set up your first store. So what do you want to sell? Uh, <laughs> Bitcoin consultancy yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or, 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 or beer or I don't know. Okay, cool. That's a digital <laughs> service. Nice. Okay, let's take the default currency. Should it be dollars or? Let's do Rand. We're in South Africa. All right, let's do Rand. Um, I guess we have to go to way oh, to the bottom. I mean, we can, but I mean, we're in South Africa, so we gotta see, like, you know? Zar. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's keep. Okay, let's create the. Boom. Now we have uh, a store. So now what we need to do is set up a wallet. So generally, what you do here, if you want to accept on chain payments, you put your. You go to Bitcoin and you put your XPUB there. So for BTC Pay, so if someone wants to pay you in Bitcoin, in on chain, uh, generates a new address for the payment. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna go to Lightning. All right, and here you can see on this instance, there is a Blink plugin installed, okay? You have the description of how you use it. All right, so we're gonna copy this, this string. Can you copy it until API key equals? Okay, now copy that. And we're gonna go up and put it here. So now we need your API key, okay? So we're gonna connect a custom Lightning node, your Blink account, it's the Blink node, to um, your store. And for that, we go to the website dashboard.blink.sv. And here, now what, you, what I need you to do is sign in with your Blink credentials. Do you have email um, or phone login? You have both. Yeah. Okay, so do the email login, please. So you will now get a one-time password to your email address. Let's see if it's as fast as the Aruba instance. <laughs> nope, not as fast. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 there's a notification. Yeah, Here we go. Just as fast. Okay. Okay. I just put it in here <laughs> so I can see what the number is. Ah, okay. Oh, you have to uh, put the oh. cursor there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're locked in here. Here we can see your balance. Or <laughs> your Bitcoin wallet and your stable sales wallet, right? Mm -hmm. So this is your home. Here you can see the transactions. And here we go to API keys and we create wi a new API key. So for that we go to plus. And here we say BTC Pay Aruba test or Bitcoin voiceover store or... Okay, so we m we're gonna make it never expire because it's just gonna be a read-only key, okay? So you can go ahead and create it. And now, here's your API key. You can copy it. And you can go over to your store again, uh, to the connection page. Yep. And uh, add it here after the equal. Now you can hit connect test connection. 
and that's it. So we go here and save the settings. And now we can try, what's the easiest way? So here's, for example, a point of sale. Let's create a point of sale app. You have an Android phone? Uh, no, I have an uh, iOS. Okay. It should still work. Yeah, it, it will work, just not the NFC. <laughs> <laughs> just not the NFC. But the NFC should work. Um, no, so on iOS devices, if you, I it does not permit to a NFC on a browser. In an app, uh, natively, yes, not in a browser. If you want to use BTC Pay server point of sales for NFC payments, you need an Android device because there is, as far as I know, no native BTC Pay server app. Uh, it's a uh, receiver, receiver. So. But let's go ahead and create a simple point of sale with a keypad, okay? Um, just for demonstration purposes. So let's save that. And now we can view it. So this is your point of sale uh, with Zar, okay? And um, now we can just enter an amount. 12 cents, 12, yeah. Yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna do this. And. Okay, let me, let me pay you. Yes, I think so also. Or if someone is faster than me, then they can do it as well. Because my. Okay. So now, this is paid. And you can check your notifications. You should have gotten a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. That's yes, great. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, and uh, this is as easy as, as it is. Um, yeah, um, that's what. Yeah. The third best place will be this uh, recording. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but the first best place is um, actually, where did I put it? On blink.sv, uh, we have a blog announcement. Um, so you go to blink.sv, SV not for Satoshi's vision, but for El Salvador. And uh, in the blog section, there is an article called Introducing the Blink Plugin for BTC Pay Server streamlining lightning payments and there's a very high level description that usually suffices um, but if you need a more detailed step-by-step -step, um, uh, guide then you can refer to the documentation here on dev.blink.sv uh, there's a section uh, for api usage examples uh, and there's the btc pay server plugin um, by the way, you can also connect uh, your BTC, p your Blink um, API key to Albi, yeah. if you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So Albi registrations are invite only at the moment. So if you want to be able to use your Blink account to make and receive payments uh, with a browser extension, Albi, you can use that in a similar way. There's another use case for that. But for this use case specifically, you can find all the information here. Um, a couple of things to note. So right now, Oken received that payment from me, I assume to his Bitcoin account. Yeah. So in the beginning, if you are a merchant that does not want to hold Bitcoin, but wants to receive stable sets, what you need to do before putting the API key into your BTC Pay server, um, in the string, you have to set the default account to stable sets and then put the API key there. If you want to change it afterwards, um, I'll go to Oken's account here one more time. So here you can also see like the stable sets account has a wallet ID here on the right. So if I now take this here and copy it and go back to the settings uh, here in the lightning settings change connection 
And then we can scroll down and see, and it will tell you here at the end that with a semicolon, wallet dash ID equals, we can s define which wallet the funds should go to. So let's do that. So let's do that. Where is the semicolon? No. Ah, here. No, that's not it. This is it. Okay, so wallet dash ID equals, no, that's not it, this one. What did I do? Oh, no. Ah, yeah. I, po I pasted it. Okay, let me, and then I deleted something. Okay, so now let's test the connection again. Mm. There's two of them, yeah. right. <laughs> so I actually, this is the one that I want to add. And this is the one for the Bitcoin wallet. Okay. So let's swap that, so yeah, my bad. Let's test connection. Oh, is it fine? I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, no. There's supposed to be one? Ah, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Let's put that back. Maybe that's it. All right, so now let's go again uh, to the point of sale. Um, return to BTC voiceovers. And uh, let's, let's pay. Let's see what happens if I pay this one. Oh, it's a LN URL. Um, all right, let's go. Let's disable this. Let's refresh this. Okay, let's try again. Oh, okay, wait a second. So what we need to do is, what you need to keep in mind, now this is uh, good that this is happening. So the stable sets account is denominated in cents and dollars. You cannot send less than a 0 0.01 cent. That's the minimum. So we need to send more than that. If I try to send less, it, won't, it will give you an error. How much should we make it? 21. 21, yeah, the Bitcoin number, 21. Yeah. Okay, so, it, but it needs to be more than, oh, sorry, this yeah, is. 21 cents. 21 cents is more than one cent. Okay, let's try 21. That's more than a US dollar cent. So now, you just paid it. okay, just got it. There it is. and you should have gotten it to which account? To, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, USD transaction. It literally says USD transaction. Yeah, so now you received it to your stable sets account. Correct. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. of setting up more than one currency. So for instance, you, s you can see the value in rands and dollars. 
US dollar. For, for international use. Um, so generally, when you set up a BTC Pay server store, you select a currency, a display, a currency yeah. that you want to denomina denominate your prices in. Yeah. Sure. What you would need to do at in that case, if you want to serve like customers from multiple countries, say Turkish market, um, British market, European market, and American market, what you probably what you need to do is you have to have a drop down uh, on the top of your page for different currencies and then switch to there and have different shops for e each of these. And you can have one BTC pay server shop where your prices are denominated in euros, one BTC pay server shop where your prices are denominated in dollars, one in lira, and so on. And uh, basically when someone switches the currency on top of the web page, they will be directed to that respective store. So European customers will be paying to one, to the euro store, Turkish Lira customers will be paying to the Turkish Lira store, etc. So the prices are all denominated in your customer's unit of account. The payment rails are lightning and the asset that you receive is Bitcoin or dollars. Yeah. Um, when will we get RAND stable sets? Great question, never. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason, and probably we will never have any other stable sats, and the reason for that is twofold. Firstly, the United States dollar is the best of the fiat currency shitcoins, and um, basically everybody wants the dollar when they are living in a inflationary currency environment. They think the dollar is stable, and in r relation to their currency it is <laughs> um, and so that's the first reason um, the second reason is it's um, the way stable sets works is with Bitcoin and markets and so you need markets that are liquid enough to create a synthetic dollar and the only liquid markets or as li as, um, a liquid fiat currency in a synthetic way and the only liquid markets that are available are BTC USD. So on there is BTC Euro derivatives markets that could be used but they are not liquid enough so if it wouldn't scale um, there would be ju it, it just wouldn't be uh, secure to offer uh, that service in a illiquid market. Yeah, so does someone else wants to want to try or any 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 further questions? Uh, just a question then to you, Timo. Um, so basically from my understanding as a non-coding person, right, it seems like anybody that I know who runs some sort of e-commerce shop can, with a little bit of guidance, put this up and then their e-commerce shop is now accepting Bitcoin, as easy as that, right? And then um, the other thing is when you when you run that the point of sale, you say that's on an Android phone. So that's essentially, I'll be on my Android phone, I'll be on the side of the street, I'm selling the thing I'm selling, I'll type in the number there, boom, and with the NFC function in the Android phone, they can tap on the back, um, was that the electricity that went? No. So they can then just tap the back of the NFC Android phone. Is that what you mean by, by the NFC Android capability? Yeah. That, that, um, that Apple can can't do. Demo that quickly. Let, uh, let's see if I can get this um, um, going. So. Um, I don't want to copy this. Well, actually, do we have? So, uh, if I could just copy this and send this uh, easily to one of you guys, do we have Telegram here, maybe, yeah. or email? Mm. 
Uh, let me see. Maybe we can do like this. There was some trick with DuckDuckGo. Where you can display something as a QR. No. Does anybody know how how do I create a QR? Oh, this is not DuckDuckGo. So this is now the point of sale that I uh, that is that is open open point of sale now on my phone on my Android phone. So you have. So I do have a little card. Basically, let's see back in the dollar and charge and pay everything in dollar. Let's make it fifty one dollars. Okay. So I'm creating uh, invoice now, but this is the lightning invoice. Pay by NFC. Yeah, it has pay by NFC. Oh yeah, pay by NFC. Hello. Good. And now this phone is now the terminal. Wait, hang on, hang on. So I can now, can I only pay with the with the Lightning NFC, or can I pay with any other NFC? No, no, no. You can only pay with the Lightning NFC. Oh, okay. So you can here. Here's the Lightning NFC. <laughs> like so there you go. There you go. It's happening. You can tap it here. And I'm here. Wait. The phone. So it's paying. Ah, and it's paying. So what are the advantages or disadvantages of using this versus voltage? Why would you choose this over voltage or what? Um, so why would you choose this over voltage? Um, so voltage makes it, um, or offers a BTC pay server hosted uh, version, right? Uh, you can, um, I'm not too familiar with it, but what you can do there is you create an account basically like you can create on my BTC pay server instance for free you can you can have a BTC pay server instance on voltages BTC pay server it's a huge BTC pay server right they don't have the blink plugin what they do is basically they also offer a lightning LND node that you can run with them that they run for you basically on their server and then you take the connection string of that lightning um, node um, that instead of the Blink API, right? So this is replacing the lightning node that you would, it's basically in, so in competition a little bit. Like this is, Yeah, so in there are full transactions. Yes, yes, you can download uh, the whole transaction list as a CSV, but if you use it in conjunction with BTC Pay Server, you also get um, like detailed accounting information in BTC Pay Server, which might be a little, which might have a little bit more detail uh, depending on the shop that you're using. For example, if you use the card function and you have different products and product IDs, maybe you're using it for your SKU for and stuff like that. Like BTC Pay Server, I think, does that uh, way better than the CSV transaction export that Blink offers. But um, yeah, and I mean, like Oaken said, um, 
sure, if you want to run your own Lightning node, do that. Uh, Voltage is a great address for that, but you have to manage your channels, you have to manage your liquidity, and uh, you have to pay a fee to, uh, for the server. Um, and, and go do that. I'm doing that for myself, right? If you can do it for yourself, do it for yourself. But if there are people who are just curious, who want to get like to accepting lightning payments from one, zero to one in two minutes uh, and try it out before they delve into things even further uh, without having too much upfront cost or friction, then this is uh, like the solution for them, I would suggest. So, so Blink is managing all the lightning channels in this situation? Yes, the uh, Blink uh, custodial lightning wallet has two uh, lightning nodes that are basically, uh, it's a redundant architecture. If one has an issue, then uh, it falls back to the other. Um, we, the, the, the lightning channels are managed by a team of on-call engineers, eight uh, or more, that are on-call 24-7, 365. Um, and they are doing this professionally. They know what they're doing. And uh, one of their tasks is actually minimizing the amount of sats that are held, that, that are deployed in channels. So most of the funds uh, of users are um, held securely off, uh, offline in a cold storage multisig, right? Uh, because it's, it's about security and it's also about capital efficiency. Um, you don't really need a lot of channels and a lot of big fat nodes. Like it just becomes a bigger honeypot for attackers to come after you, and, and, and just uh, a little bit of capital. That's why, like, there's only like, like haters are saying, "Oh, there's only five thousand Bitcoin on the Lightning Network." Yeah, but you, the velocity of it <laughs> is insane, like unseen and unheard of. Like you can. You can facilitate a lot of transactions with a uh, few Satoshis while keeping the savings secure and offline and not on an always on um, server um, that is a hot wallet and that is more vulnerable than a geographically distributed multisig called storage. I've got a new website. I'm publishing a, a book, um, and it's relative to the website, which is supplemental to, to it. Is there any uh, developers here that can help me set this up on a paid basis? I would pay uh, for assistance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we talk afterwards? Yeah. So what we can actually do, if you pick the right stack and are utterly non-technical with WordPress, with WooCommerce, with BTC Pay Server and Blink, an entirely open source stack in two minutes and, and just a phone number, you can set up a business from anywhere in the world and sell goods to anybody in the world and get paid instantly <laughs> and... And and hold dollars or Bitcoin, just your choice. 